You are now listening to Two Dudes in Their Thirties with Adam and Greg. They're gonna talk about stuff, and you're gonna listen. Okay, got it. Good. Let's start the show. Hell yeah! Hey, Adam. What's up? What are you going to be drinking tonight? I have a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale here tonight. Ooh, nice. Got a yeah. Modern Times Nitro from San Diego, the City of the Dead. How was your week? Not bad. Busy. Yeah. I just got a, a phone call from my, my old boss. He was telling me he had like a week from hell and he was begging me to come back. Oh, yeah. He said like one guy literally just quit today, like drove the vehicle home and just said, I'm done. I'm never coming back. Come get your vehicle from my house an hour away from the shop. Um, That's fun. He said he he bit into a pretzel today and cracked (coughs) his molar right in half, split it right in half. He, he he went to uh, the dentist and he, he apparently had to get the whole thing just yanked out. They couldn't do anything for him, so he was like pissed off. Uh, so he had a good Friday. Yeah, he had, he had a great great start to his weekend. How was your week? What you said you were? What do you do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Is that it? Yeah, usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today I work just to get some extra money. Uh, I got the the dog going in for her surgery consult tomorrow. You know she's got a tumor on her chest, so we trying to figure out you know what's what's the next step with that and uh yeah obviously like my wife we only had the dog for like a month but my wife is super attached to it as as am i it's, it's a good little pup maybe i'll put i'll put a picture of her up on uh two dudes 30 on our instagram or something yeah so people can see it cool mm. um so I said, I told you earlier when we were talking, well, A, should we give the background that we did this and we lost, like, uh, a whole show, basically. Oh, God. But ultimately, I think it was, like, a blessing in mm-hmm. disguise because it was on a, it was, we were talking music, which was a fun conversation, but I don't know that it ends up flowing well with what we're really trying to talk about. And right. so I think it helps, it help, over the last couple of days, we've, like, tightened up the the thought process here and like the niche of it and i think we're like heading down a better track yeah in terms of that which is going to be talking trying to talk to people and talking about just like people taking chances kind of trying to the different entrepreneurs mm-hmm. other people that are living sort of their like to their own liking like what they want to do yeah um and so i think that's that's helping to sort of tighten our focus up and talk a little bit more about this so we'll talk about We'll talk about our work and history and background in a little while, but um, just kind of in catching up, total, totally not aligned with that at all. But just in uh, in in catching up on, on the weeks, we get one of the couple of things we were talking about the other day. Um, one of which was the whole social media thing, which I'll talk about again in a second because um, it's interesting. But um, it's Friday right now, and uh, this school shooting just happened again the other day, which I think is just totally crazy. Um, yeah, and this isn't like a political show or even like a political thing, I don't think, but as somebody that now has two kids and they're going to go to school at some point, it's kind of just like, mm. wonder what is happening and how to, <clears throat> how do we, how do you stop this from happening? So before I give my spiel on that, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are in general. Oh God. <clears throat> so obviously like a ton of people lost, so like 17 people died. Yeah, so they said so far. It's it's devastating. Obviously, like I think a lot of people have a, a ton of opinions. Oh, we have to do this. We have to do this. Uh, obviously, like gun control is a huge topic, and uh, I don't know. But I think just getting down to like the bare basics, somehow, like we have to understand like that life has value. I think that we have to teach like children somehow that like life has value. Everybody has a purpose. Everyone has you know, dreams and goals and like aspirations and like people have futures. Like somehow that's not something you can necessarily like teach or regulate. 
I guess you could learn it through example, you know, that, that each and every one of us has a purpose in life and, um, we each have value. I don't know what your thoughts are. It's crazy. Like, like, I think the thing that is, that annoys me, I mean, obviously the biggest thing is the fact that people are still, are just killing people so much, which is insane. Mm. But the thing that's in your face, if you're on like social media at all, is that it's the political debate on it. It isn't even about the people. Yeah. And the the crazy thing is, is like, if you're, if you're like a staunch Republican, mm-hmm. your defense in this case, where your your argument, the argument seems to be in this case that there hasn't. I don't know if you saw the thing where it was like there's been 18 school shootings in the U.S. since the beginning of January or something. Mm-hmm. And so the argument for those who are on that side of the debate is that there really hasn't been 18 school shootings this mm-hmm. year so far. That's that's like fake news. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that is that's like the narrative of that side, which I think is which I find interesting. Mm-hmm. And then the narrative of the other side, of course, is that you know uh, thoughts and prayers aren't enough anymore. We need to do something about the gun laws and mm-hmm. like it. So it becomes that becomes like the argument, which. I don't know. I don't know. You know if that distracts from like what could potentially help to solve any of this. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. Like, I don't know if you need to take guns away. If you need to take certain kinds away, I don't know that that would even really work. Yeah. I just know that like somebody that does have an idea needs to like try doing something so that way we don't have this happen continuously. And the thing that is just kind of shocking is that it does seem like, for the most part, we're like the only developed country in the world that this continues to be an epidemic and yeah, it's, way, it's, it's, it's gotta like it's, be like better than that i don't know so complex like there's so many layers probably to the to the whole situation that you can't just like shoot a dart at one issue or one topic you know these these people some might have like you know mental mental health issues which that's a whole topic in its own you know some might some might have bad upbringings in life so like you know, the social economic aspects to it. Um, it's, it's tough, man. I, really. I guess like the bottom, bottom line, like people, people like kill people and hurt, hurt one another over like, like every single day over like, like muggings and things like that. Like for, for money or for like, you know, killing people over like getting a pair of Jordans or, or whatever. It's like, they value these these other things above like the human life, which is it's just it's ununderstandable in my mind. But I don't know. Yeah, like like what you said, like, there's just no value. There's no, and maybe like maybe it's mental issues. I don't know, but there's not enough value placed on life. Yeah, yeah. it's so it's just it's hard to fathom. I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's totally distressing to watch. But I, it's hard to like uh, start talking you know, without kind of having a conversation about that, because it's just, it's just, um, I don't know. It's hard to even, uh, hard to even describe. It's hard to even talk about. It's hard to say what Mm -hmm. what the right thing is. And I'm not, and I I think you're probably like me too. You're not super staunchly one direction or the other politically. Um, and so for, for me and probably for you too, like I don't, I'm not going to fall on either side strongly. I just hope that, that whoever is in charge can figure out some, potential solutions to this and start working on it and doing something It's like they've done nothing since when's the last time they tried to do anything that would change any of this yeah, i feel yeah. like i i don't know I don't yeah know. yeah it's too complex for my my small mind you know, honestly <laughs> I, I, i'm i'm not smart enough there's somebody out there that can can probably break it down better than us yeah <laughs> so. i don't know it's just beyond yeah i don't know like i don't i definitely don't have the answers nor am i intelligent enough to talk about it it's just hard to fathom it yeah. just really is it's, it's hard sad. to it's hard to keep watching it you know? yeah you just sad. never know when it's going to happen again it's going to happen again soon because it just keeps happening so it's weird yeah. okay so something else we were talking about um last time before we got cut off was uh, the whole social media thing and i was kind of like i don't know, a little bit of a rant about uh, social media kind of not being so social and mm. the main kind of crux of the argument was that again we're trying to interview people we'd like to talk to people for this thing and so we've reached out to a few folks we haven't got a lot of responses which is totally acceptable and understandable we haven't done anything yet but one of the things that was kind of in, a little bit curious and a little bit annoying to me was that we had a few people that were following us that i reached out to just to say hey 
you know, you follow us. Thanks for following along. We'd love to chat with you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and not only did they not respond, which again is totally fine, they stopped following us uh, immediately, like almost immediately <laughs> on Instagram. You have a way so, with people. Yeah, I guess so. It was like, it was totally weird to me. Like, I just, I didn't understand. And um, basically what I said was, thanks for following. We're starting this podcast. We'd love to chat with you. We're looking to talk to people who are interesting, inspiring, taking some chance in their lives. It looks like you're doing that. No pressure either way, but we'd love to connect. Mm-hmm. No response. Again, totally fine. And following, gone. Oh, wow. We, we so I'm like, out. is that, is that? I mean, do people like not really want to be social even though they're on social media? It's like a little strange. It's so selfish these days. Everyone's like, they put their social media up just so that they can look at it and have like other people like it and other people like, I don't know, think that they're cool. I don't know what it is. Social media should be about interacting and, and going back and forth. I mean, if you have like a, I don't, you don't have to want to talk to us. Like, I have no problem with that. But uh, it's just like it almost seemed like they were like weirded out by the <laughs> by the outreach when they have like when they have a public profile where anybody can follow them and they have thousands of followers. And especially because they like reached out and liked our stuff. Exactly. Why they were following? They were following along. So this is I kind of found it a little bit strange. But you know, no, again, no big deal. All good. Like yeah. we'll find people to talk to yep. at some point. Uh-huh. So. My uh, my old boss said that he'll talk to us, so we have one person willing to. Great, <laughs> and we got a couple. We got a couple of things in the works, so we'll get it. We'll get it going. It's all good, but it's just I just found that kind of interesting. So, what else? Anything else on your end? Catch oh, up on? Man, not really. No. So let's get into work. We're talking work here, mm-hmm. uh, and we figured we'd just kind of go back and go through some stories of ours, and 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 just kind of. Uh, set the set the tone or the background for where we're coming at from with our perspectives on all this as we start to you know, maybe talk to some other people. So, um, I guess first things the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking a little bit about this topic was kind of trying to go all the way back to when I first started thinking about like work mm-hmm. and what formed what formed my thoughts. I guess mm. and uh, so I guess you can kind of take it any any way, but I guess the first thing that sort of popped into my head was that like when I was like when I was like a kid, my mom said that like all I want garbage man, which is totally fine. But like I would like run to the window and like watch like every day it was garbage day and always say that like I would definitely wanted to be like a garbage man. Like I was like obsessed with like the truck and that was like the first thing that I really wanted to do. And then I think I, I was into like construction too. So like anything I guess with like tr- trucks, but that's probably typical for like a boy. Absolutely. Do you remember like your first memories of like what you wanted to do or sort of how that maybe it was like formed yeah i definitely want to be a baseball player i want to be a pro baseball player because my grandfather he played professional baseball and he would always like come up in the summer times and spend the whole summer with us and i think his influence and impact on my life was was major you know you look up to your grandpa so uh i had an unrealistic goal from a, a, a early early age <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's all good. You, you, you know, you have to have something to aspire to. I don't know. There's not a lot of boys out there that were into sports that didn't think that they wanted to be like a professional at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That was the goal. <laughs> and then, like, what about what about like your parents? So, like, mm. for me, I and I think it was weird. Like, I, I think when I don't know, at least from my perspective, when I was a kid, it's hard. Like. You don't really know what, if your parents are like struggling work wise. If they, I didn't really know like when I was young if they enjoyed it or not, or I didn't even know that that really was like a frame of reference for me. Yeah. It was just kind of like something that they did. Um, but then I think as I got a little bit older, like I sort of realized that like my dad ultimately kind of liked what he did mm-hmm. for work, but my mom kind of didn't. Like mm. she, she definitely is a super duper hard worker. Like probably the hardest worker I know from a work perspective, but. She did what she had to do because she was like, that's the right thing to do. Like, you go to right. work, you work hard, you get paid a decent wage, you got a family to support. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I kind of knew early – well, I don't know that I knew early on, but I think it ultimately shaped where I'm at now or how my life developed that, like, I was going to try to do whatever I could do to not feel like that when I went to work. And I definitely had jobs that I, I had previously that I did feel like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but – Part of what I do now in my current role is to try to like match people with their jobs, with jobs that they're with, that are right for them, that are good for them. And I don't know that I keep this at the forefront of my mind 
all the time when I'm talking to people, but I definitely like you, if you're going to go to a job, you know, at least don't hate it. You know what I mean? Like find something redeeming about it. Mm -hmm. And so I just always feel bad when I see people that like just totally despise what they do, but they stay for any number of reasons. A lot of which can be reasonable reasons. It's just, it's kind of unfortunate. So I don't know, like what kind of experience did you have with your parents growing up with work and sort of the relationship with that? I think like two, like I couldn't put two and two together that my parents actually worked to put food on the table. Like for whatever reason, I was like oblivious. Like I knew that they went and did stuff, but I didn't appreciate it. It's like a kid thing, right though? Yeah. Yeah. Like I couldn't, I couldn't fathom that them going to work was the reason that I had food on the table and, and whatnot. I probably did, but I didn't appreciate it for sure. You know, my mom worked nights, like overnights for the first maybe 10 years of my life. So it was weird schedules. My my dad would be with us, you know, when we got off the bus from school or whatever. And then like when we woke up in the in the morning, my mom would be there. So it was always kind of an odd. He went in early, right? Yeah, he would go in super early. Yeah. So it's kind of an odd dichotomy. But like looking at it now, I don't know. My parents are divorced. I feel like maybe it was like they were working different schedules for reasons. I don't know, you know, just to like make, make things work for us. Who knows? But yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't really appreciate, I think what your parents have done in life until you get to like, you know, twenties, thirties and, and really see the sacrifices that they've, they've done to, to make you happy and to put you first, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know, it's it's interesting how you sort of evolve and you start to see things. And it, like you said, it's hard to even see it. It's, it's hard to even see it now sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I guess those experiences that you had you, or that, you know, they where they kind of ended up and the things that they did obviously sort of shaped, mm-hmm. you know, your, your maybe your thoughts or your your relationship with work. It's kind of interesting. Absolutely. Um, what about first jobs? What was your first job? I don't even I don't know that I know that answer to that question. I think you and I had a business together. A&G's, was that the first job? A and G's lawn care. Yeah. Yeah. We well, your dad had a, your dad had your dad had a rider, right? It was like oh a my God, yeah. like a silver or like a gray like mm, riding lawn something like that. I think it was a craftsman. You, <laughs> so you had that, but it, and at one point you had like an electric lawnmower, didn't you? Mm, well, the story is. My dad would use the lawnmower for like three summers to like cut lawns. I was probably like nine, nine, ten, and eleven or something like that. We were young. I'd be like, ha- I'd be hanging off the back of the thing with like a weed whacker. <laughs> yeah, it was probably the most hoopers. dangerous thing ever. I'm surprised somebody little like, kids. Stop and you were like, us. you were. I was. I was. I'm not a tall person at all. Mm. But you, like, as a kid, like, you were tiny. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Like super tiny. Probably couldn't even see over the wheel. Yeah, I'm, I'm out there working, <laughs> cutting people's lawns with this dangerous lawnmower. So I yep. think what ended up happening is like I didn't put oil in it and like my dad never serviced anything in life. He He's like not mechanically inclined whatsoever. And I think what happened was I was at somebody's home. Dads are similar in that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. My dad's had the same snowblower for like 17 years and like two years ago was the first time that I think he ever even checked the oil. Oh, God. Yeah, I think he had it for 15 years and he just would pull a cord every every November or December the first time it snowed and hope it started and it just kept starting. Oh yeah. Our dad's so one year he cloth. <laughs> one year he eventually like a couple years ago he got it like tuned up. He had like somebody take a look at it finally and tune it up and then it stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes he had a good thing uh, going. He shouldn't have even yeah. brought it in, you know? Yeah. So. One quick side note too. He actually he, he was like trying to start a neighbor snowblower one time and like I walked up behind him and uh <laughs> he was cranking on this thing like cranking 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 and i just like I, I thought he heard me i thought he knew i was there and so he yanked up on it one more time and elbowed me like right in the side of the head and knocked me right down on oh the ground my God. but well, okay did, did anyway it start? did it start at least i never got started oh no. god it wasn't worth it then he ended up using his own and bringing it over there so my, my dad never checked the oil or anything and I, I remember specifically like black smoke started coming out of the lawnmower as i'm going along it just died. It was like... <laughs> and that was it? Yeah. Dad, uh, come and get the lawnmower. It's not working. You know? So... AG's long service was... Yeah, it no, died. No more. It, that, I think it died right then and there. So what about, like, first, like, actual paid job on the books? Oh, man. Dishwasher for Venezia's Pizza, which is now Jimmy's Pizza in Pasta in yes. Malta, New York. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, that was, that was, uh... 
You want to tell any stories about Jimmy's Pizza? <laughs> oh God, there's so many ridiculous. Because I was a I was crazy, a delivery driver there. Crazy you you and I. For feeling so lonely. Yep. Yeah. Mark. Oh, Mark of Pizza. He's You're gonna drop his full name on this thing. All right. First you, and you, last. You can edit just like a boop. Over his last name. I'm pretty sure I don't know how to do that. Pets He'll never listen to this. It doesn't. Yeah. Um. He was an interesting fellow. He used to always. Uh. He he kept he'd always get me with this. Always. I for hey, whatever buddy. reason I just. Hey, never, I got something for you. <laughs> yeah. I got to, he pulled his hand out of his. He pulled his hand out of his pocket and gave me the give me the finger. <laughs> and that was what he had for me every time. Every single time. Yeah. I think when I finally yeah. quit that job. Uh, him and one of like the line cooks tried to throw me into the dumpster in the back, and I remember specifically like punching the the line cook in the nuts and like elbow dropping Mark in the head, and I got out of it. So, mm. to, like, so we started working there when we were like um, like we like sixteen seventeen. We were first yeah. started driving because we were like delivery drivers, but we they were we were like the first two that they had. They didn't deliver before that, so we get like we three deliveries the idea a night. To them. I think we literally proposed the idea. Like we want you a job. Find, Can you please like hire us to deliver yeah, pizzas? I think, I think you had worked there as like a dishwasher, but then I think you stopped working there, right? Mm-hmm. And then you maybe went back and wanted to work again, and so you were like, "Hey, I'll be a delivery driver." And then I you were like, "I know a buddy of mine that could do it too." Absolutely. So we've been going into we've been doing stuff together for like a long time. And your sister was a waitress there. She did that for a long time too, mm-hmm. right? Because, yeah. but um, years. But yeah, so when we first started though, like they didn't, they weren't known for delivery at all. So we would like make like two deliveries a night, mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then just like wash dishes and eat the food basically. Yep, yep. free food. Then as it started getting rock and roll, like it got it got pretty busy. I remember I'd go back in college and do it, and like at the end of the night, like. Jimmy and Mark would be in the back drinking Budweiser and Heinekens and like <laughs> kind of wrapping up the evening, doing doing the dough. Oh yeah, making the dough. Yep. I remember one time when you were working there. Like I think you were probably like fourteen when you started there or something. Mm-hmm. However old you can be to actually work. Yep. My dad said he saw you come out. Papers. Working papers. My dad, said, my dad said he saw you coming out of the back with like fifty pizza boxes stacked up. Oh god. And uh, he was like, he's like, all of a sudden. I heard Heard this little voice and I, I turned over and I couldn't even see it. It was behind all these pizza boxes. It was Adam. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So that was that was like an interesting job. There was some guy that was like an absolute like d bag to me. I remember. It. And one day I just went in and quit. I felt bad, but I literally just I didn't know how to deal with confrontation. You're 16, 17 years old. No idea. Like, uh, like a customer that you delivered to? No, it was one of the coworkers that we had. Oh, gotcha. Like, yeah, he was like this ROTC military kid that thought he was cool, and I don't know, was like punking me constantly when I was in the back washing dishes. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy is a nice guy, though. Yeah, Jimmy was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think one of my first jobs was um, a camp counselor at the Malta Town Park over the summer. Mm-hmm. Like, and, what skills do you think you learned, though? You know, looking back, what skills did you learn there at that job? Mm. <sighs> I guess somewhat like how to deal with kids, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not not really, because uh, I, you know, didn't really pay a lot of attention to him, even though I was supposed to, like, you know, you're 15 and you're, like, overseeing 10 kids. Uh, I mean, I, I was serious enough to, like, make sure, want to make sure that, like, nobody, like, got lost on my watch or, like, really got hurt or anything like that. But, but I mean, like, they had us, like, supervising these like 10 kids at like water slide world like we were like responsible for like 10 ch- children in water surprise, like surprise, and you were like surprise no one drowned a kid you were a kid i mean there's lifeguards but seriously like you were like a kid yourself trying to watch 10 kids like running around like lunatics yeah. across this park it was crazy yeah crazy and then i actually kept mowing lawns like i just was lazy yeah so i didn't really want a job so like but I was like 17, like it was the summer before our, our senior year of high school. Uh, my parents kept bugging me to get a job and I just like really didn't want one. So I'm like, I'll just start a lawnmower business. And I think I had like two lawns. I was getting like 20 bucks a week. But back, <laughs> back then, like I didn't have any expenses, yeah. you know, we had a car, but I mean, we didn't, even, my parents bought the car for us. I'm pretty sure. So all we had to do was put gas in it. Besides yeah. that, well, I mean, what else did I really need money for? Oh my God. Going back, I think mm-hmm. one of your neighbors, I'm not going to name a name because it might be like an offense, like a sexual offense. I remember her, her putting like... The, the, like a sexual offense? <laughs> yeah. So I remember like after I'd mow the lawn, she would slip the money into my pocket with her hand. It was the weirdest thing. 
It was a, I, I don't know why she would do this, but like I'd have my hands on like the mower or whatever. I'm going like just finishing up, and she'd come out and she she literally put the money in my pocket, my front pocket. Is that is that weird? <laughs> uh, um, did she say anything? Did she look you in the eye when she did it, or she whispered "thank you"? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. How old are you? Maybe eleven. Yeah, that works. Good enough. Mm-hmm. Yep. When you're eleven, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. We'll just move on from that. Okay. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So as you're going through like high school and stuff, what were you thinking about in terms of career? Did you even have any sort of a clue or even really want to think about it? I was always into like daydreaming and drawing and things like that. I liked art and uh, I thought I was decent at it. So I thought like architecture would have been a really cool thing to get into. And uh, I think I applied to like four or five different places for architecture. And I don't think I actually got accepted for any architecture program because I didn't know that you actually had to like create a portfolio. Like I don't I don't think I had a whole lot of guidance in my life to say, you know, what what colleges are looking at is a really good portfolio of all, all of your artwork. So uh Yeah, I didn't have that prepared. But um <laughs> I got into the engineering school. So like did uh 2 years of engineering and just gave up after that. So you did like a semester, I know, away from home at a college. You went to Roger Williams, right, in Rhode Island first. And then you came back and did went to Hudson Valley for like, a, what, a year yeah, and a half? Yeah, like a year and a half. So I had probably like 50 credits. I don't know. Never followed through on any of it. Kind of a regret. A little bit of a regret in life, but I, don't, I feel like I'm in a good position in life. So it, I guess the end justifies the means. I don't know. You don't really see yourself going back or even having any interest in that? I don't know. It'd, uh, not really. Yeah. How about you? <clears throat> so, they, when I was really like, so okay, so yeah, the garbage man thing and like the construction worker thing. I, I don't know. Pretty. I was like a village person, like almost. And that's a really bad joke, <laughs> but um, I don't think there was a garbage person in the village. People was there? No. There was was there was a there was a construction worker. Yeah, construction police, Indian. What was the other one? I don't know. Oh, police? Yeah. Yeah, police, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I got to find this out now. <laughs> Looks. Oh, there was a construction person. Yeah, okay. construction, police. There was, a, there was a cowboy, I think. Indian and cowboy, yeah. Yep. There we go. Army guy. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, so once I got over that, like I, I really had no idea. <clears throat> My sister like always knew what she wanted to be. She wanted to be a teacher from the time she was a little kid. Mm-hmm. Even when she was in school, she wanted to be a teacher. And I never had that. I never had that strong pull to like really want to do anything. And it probably goes back to some of the stuff we were talking about the first time. And I, I don't think it's ambition. I don't even know if it's laziness. I think it's just kind of not really – just not knowing. And I think that's kind of – kind of natural and so when I went through high school I, I knew that I got pretty good grades same as you and I kind of had the expectation sort of drilled into me from growing up early on that like college is kind of what the next step is I, I was never forced but it just kept trending in that direction like mm-hmm. I wasn't an artist I wasn't going to like go out on my own or do anything like that and so <clears throat> it was really about just figuring out like where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do and I couldn't really come up with anything. I I knew I was probably going to stay local, and I went to a college that offered like a bunch of different programs, so I was able to try some different things out. But when I went to college, I actually went as a history major to start Mm -hmm. because I thought I would be a social studies teacher. I did that for a year, took all like the liberal art or the gen ed classes, and then I just was I was kind of scared that if I graduated with a history degree and I decided I didn't want to be a teacher that I'd have nothing to do, mm. which looking back, I mean, you get a four year degree from anywhere. It's fine. You know, mm. somebody would have hired me with a history degree and they wouldn't have cared that much. But when you're 19, you know, you don't know exactly. anything, you know. So and I knew some people that were a couple years older than me at Siena who were in like the marketing management program. And that's basically like the business administration degree there. So it's, you know, you can pretty much do anything with that. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to switch over to this. So I did that. 
And then I became, I was like a junior. I was like halfway through my junior year, and I'm like, maybe I do want to teach. I'm just going back and forth. I really didn't want to do anything, which was kind of like the crux of it. But I thought, I thought if I was a teacher, maybe I could like coach also. Mm-hmm. And I thought I would at least enjoy that part of it. What's going and on so, with you right now? Are you hiccuping or burping? What's going on? Both. <laughs> both. I ate, I ate a whole pizza for dinner, oh, an entire God. pizza, <sighs> and I could I could have had two. But it's it's hurting my uh, digestive system a touch. Oh my god! I can tell. Got me, got me a little gassy. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, this uh, this Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, although tasty, mm. is doing nothing to help. Oh man! I feel a little congested. <clears throat> I got the one ear off here because I'm trying to like hear my voice. Cause I'm feeling ex- exceptionally nasally, but mm. whatever. We're working through it. Okay. So, and I'm trying to have to burp into the mic. Mm-hmm. So, that's where we're at <laughs> on a Friday night. This episode is a total failure. Keep going. So, at least it's recording still. That's good. Let's keep that going. All right. So, what was I even saying? Okay, so um, in my like junior year, I thought I <laughs> don't laugh at me. Well, actually, you can. That's all right. You can laugh. Mm-hmm. So, I was trying to figure out. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I would go back to teaching. Maybe I could coach. But then I didn't think I could really even get a job. Like 2005, six, there was really not a lot of teaching jobs. The economy was kind of not phenomenal. It was sort of trending to what it was going to be in 2008, eight, nine, which was terrible. So I didn't know. So at the end of my time at CN, I started taking a couple more education classes, thinking that maybe I would go back and do that. I like the fr- the fall of my senior year, I I got into like six classes because I'm like, all right, I'm going to load up on these education classes. I'm going to just take a ton of. I'm going to take six classes each semester. I'll get my teaching certificate, or I'll be ready to get it. Like, and then I'll be done. Yeah. And then I went to the I went to the very first class, the very first education class. Uh, it was a night class of my freshman year. First night, went to it. After that, I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm not taking six. Cl- I just got like lazy again. Like I just was like, I'm not taking six classes. I still don't really know if I want to do this. My heart wasn't in it. I'm like, screw it. I'm done. I'm not taking it. So I just stopped taking it. And um, I graduated with a degree in marketing management. I just didn't have a clue what the hell I was going to do. Yeah. So I went home and lived with my parents and hung out. <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, 22-year-old college grad, no job, just hanging. Why? Why is it a lot of people fall into that though? You know, I feel like a lot of people that go, go to school that they, they like struggle to find their first job. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think you honestly are, like I don't know that you're ready to go to college and make a decision on life at 18. In fact, I know you're not, you're not for the most part. So you probably need a year to sit it out and then kind of decide. But you know, as I don't think you know, my parents weren't going to be psyched about that idea, and and rightfully so. You know, I think that all they kind of knew was like getting to school and mm-hmm. and go after it and and get the degree and try to figure it out from there. So, yeah. so yeah, so I I would like, I don't know, I kind of floated um, for a little while, and then my parents were ready to like basically kick me out. I mean, not literally, but they were pretty much feeling like they were like, like I graduated in May. It was October the. That following fall, I still wasn't working. I was just kind of hanging. Mm. Maybe been back delivering pizzas a little bit. Mm. I don't even know. And I, I found this entry level like sales job. And I, the one thing I didn't want to do with that degree was do sales. Yeah. I just hated it. I didn't want to be pushy. I felt like I was going to be bothering people. I just did not want to. And you know, ultimately, as you get into business more, you realize that, like every job is sales. Yeah. I well, hate back then. I, I know I hate car salesmen. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, like I, that's what I sort of thought sales was. Yeah, like, just pushy, sell you things you don't need. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's good car salesmen out there, but like the the stereotype of the that profession is just you know get you into things like upsell you. Uh, yeah, you know, business deals. Yeah. Yeah. So I just like I didn't have any interest in doing it, but it was funny because at the time. Uh. We were talking about, um, hey, no talking to her off camera. <laughs> Does she want to say hello? No, I was, I was going to give her a kiss. She's leaving. Keep going. Sorry. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> she says I love you, but I don't know if she's talking oh, to me or you. She was talking to me. <laughs> probably. You're probably right. Okay. So, so, yeah, So, but it's funny because at the time that I started that job, uh, the office was like really big, mm-hmm. starting to be big, and, and you, so you but, identified with Ryan. I remember you—you you literally self-identified with him. 
I think I pretty much did, yeah. When he was, like, before he turned into, like, a really... Like, they turned his character into, like, a weirdo. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, at the beginning, like, the first couple of years, like, definitely, like, I was just, like, a loaf. Like, I didn't want to be there, but I did it. it um, but they had, like, they had office awards mm-hmm. at this place. They had, like, little trophies, and, like, so they were, like, the Dundies, and it just was, like, I was in a cubicle... I was selling. It was it was like hell on earth. Like it was a nightmare. Yeah. And then they like basically fired me after three months. I it wasn't really fired. I got like essentially laid off. Mm-hmm. But that was my welcome to the working world. Oh man. All right. So I guess like my my first job, like real job or whatever, would be working overnights for the post office, the USPS. I forgot you did that. Yeah, sorting mail. I think uh, my mom got me probably in because she worked for the post office for like 30-something years. She's still actually working for the post office. So um, if you like smoking weed, sorting mail would probably be the best job in the world for you. You can just zone out, just like slap mail on these machines and, and, and scoop it up and put it in, in bins. It was It was pretty repetitive and like you didn't have to use your brain at all. So like that, I would recommend people that don't want to actually think in life, go to the post office. Nice. Yeah. So, so you, but, so you finished up school, you got the job at the post office and then, I mean, you obviously, what else have you done? You got, you're obviously mechanically inclined and you sort of started doing that stuff. Yeah. I got my my foot into like a a trades program. I I work for the company and, and learn heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So like that was probably one of the better decisions I've made in my life. Um, it created a lot of opportunity unbeknownst to me. Like I didn't understand at the time that like having a trade, you can get a job anywhere. And I think it's like not, not necessarily pushed a whole lot in, in like public school systems, like to go and get a trade. But um, there's a lot of value in, in learning something that you can take with you anywhere you want to go. So agreed. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to tell people how, like I saved your life and yeah, gave you a place to, to live. Basically, and... basically we, we were living together for like a while. You, me and, and Mutt helmet. And, uh, I think like we ended up getting different apartments wherever. And yeah, you found like a position. Cause like it, it was like 2009. It was like the crash of the economy. I ended up losing my job after like half of my entire company got laid off. It was it was pretty bad. Like one day I went in there, literally the half of the crew got fired. So about a year after that or so, I I ended up getting getting let go. And I think a few months later, you you got me a job at like the the place that we were living, doing like maintenance work or whatever. Like you were you were a headhunter at the time, right? Right. Yeah. So I got out of the the three month sales racket. Mm-hmm. And when I was in college, I was kind of thinking like, like maybe HR was something that I'd be interested in just because I thought it wasn't salesy. Like I didn't have any, a lot of people say they want to get into HR cause they like people or whatever. Yeah. I don't really, people are okay, but, um, wasn't really why I wanted to get into it. I just was thinking that I, I wouldn't really have to sell and maybe I could just like consult with people and talk to people and like help kind of, I don't know, like guide, maybe do some policy stuff. And I didn't have to like do super interactive type, selling and so but i got a job with a staffing firm which ultimately is sales Mm -hmm. pretty much all it is so yeah i got the job there and then this thing came up this apartment complex i knew that you weren't working at the time i'm like this might be right for you and it came with some good perks you got to have an apartment and i think you you live for free right yeah i got to live for free like health insurance they gave me a company vehicle it was like it was honestly it was a good setup for like uh, for the time it was awesome it was a good good setup for me and my wife yeah, so it worked out, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so you did that, and then uh, throughout all that, Teresa was doing the nursing schooling, and yeah, yeah. She, now you want to, you guys are out and traveling the country, just kind of doing your thing, right? Yeah. So, like, in, I guess I'll back up a little bit. So after, like, I was I was pretty unhappy at the apartment at the end. It was just because of, like a, a new boss, horrible boss. She was so erratic. Anyway. I uh, I started putting my feelers out there for like other things that I'd be interested in, and uh, like re- renewable energy was like huge I think at that time, so I got I got in with like one of my old coworkers from like when I first started in the trades. He started his own business. He went out there, 
he actually leveraged his like his life savings to start this company. And I think he would actually be a cool guy to talk to at some point. We we might we might want to reach out and interview him, but um he's all he's also the guy that cracked his tooth that I was talking to today. So he's he's funny <laughs> funny funny as heck. Anywho, so I started working with him. He does he was doing some really awesome like renewable energy like solar thermal integration into like heating and, and air conditioning systems. So the things that I, I took out of that job is that literally I can do anything I set my heart to. Like he gave me so many opportunities to like do these awesome projects that were like nobody else was doing. And he's like, yo, you can do this. Just here, I'll give you the tools that you need. Whatever you need, ask and and you can do this. And I think like putting yourself in a position of up against like challenges and, and like where you have to grow in life. Um, it's difficult, but when you actually like produce what you're supposed to and, and you really fine tune your skills and you like, you build your confidence, like I absolutely loved, loved that job. It was, it was fantastic. It was like one of the, the best jobs I ever had in my life. And at some point when, when Teresa and I, you know, finish up this whole road tripping all around the U S kind of thing. I'll, I'll probably go back there and work for him for, for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <clears throat> mm. So what, how did you get now? You, you ended up going to like, like a prestigious university too. And like working, working after that job, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I got the job there, and I I don't know I got I wanted to get out of like the staffing recruiting game. I wanted to get more into an HR department, and um, and so I, I took this job at this university, and ultimately I I thought maybe I'd stay there for a long time, but it turned out to be maybe not the right fit, um, just for a number of different reasons. And I got the job I have now; it's good. It's in an HR department at a, at a company around here, and overall I like it. Um, you know, every job has its things. Uh, for sure. But like, luckily I think one of the most important things at a job is your boss. And, um, I have a good one, so we get along well and and things work well. And, um, that, that helps to keep me, uh, you know, along with a number of other things. I mean, ultimately it's a good place to work and, um, there's a lot of flexibility and, um, they're all about family. So, so yeah, it's all good. Like good fit for now, for sure. Yeah. So you said, you know, ultimately that you're thinking you want to maybe go back there and, and, and do that, or do you have another, any other ideas of what else you want to do? At some point in life, I I think there's certain things that you look for in a job. Like one is like maybe a little bit of freedom, like, you know, or creativity or, um, you know, that your boss trusts you and, and, and encourages you to grow. Um, so that, those are things that I really liked about that place, you know, um, currently like. I'm working for, for SeaWorld in San Diego, which is pretty freaking cool gig, um, in their zoological department under like their water quality department. So like a lot of interaction with, with like the animals and the exhibits and things like that and making sure everything's running properly. And I think it kind of go, goes like hand in hand with like my, my interests and my skills. Um, kind of like, for a hobby, you know, did like saltwater aquariums and, and whatnot for like five years and really like scuba diving, really liked, um, I don't know, like aquariums and stuff like that, you know, all through, through my childhood. So, um, kind of being able to use my skills and, and kind of mesh with my interests is awesome for right now. So, um, yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. I think like somehow finding that, like if people can find like their interests and find like a job that goes hand in hand, it's, it's interesting how it doesn't feel like work, you know, and I feel like a lot of people, you know, are just trudging through life and, and not necessarily happy with, with their careers, yep. but like if they can find a way to like mesh their interests with their, with their work, I don't know. I, I definitely encourage it. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's tough. People are, people get stuck in situations. They make, they, like I said, like going back to the beginning, like with my, my mom, especially like she just felt like she had to stay where she stayed because of family and a check and you know, you know, I think life ultimately is too short for a lot of people to do that. And so people kind of trudge out on their own and, and try to try to do their own thing. And I think we're going to hopefully try to talk to some of those people and, 
you know, get some insight and some and some feedback from them as to how they sort of did it and the challenges and the trials and tribulations and some background and what led to them to make those decisions or, you know, all that all that stuff. So I think kind of looking forward to hopefully having having some of those conversations and seeing like, you know, what that does in terms of your happiness, your outlook, or you know, your day to day and sort of what that what that means. Yeah, so um, we'll, so we'll, we'll keep reaching out to these people that we find interesting, people that we we feel like are are doing you know, what they're passionate about in life. And, and hopefully, you know, in the next few weeks we'll get some people that will actually connect and reconnect with us and want to, you know, do an, do an interview and, and we can hear from them and their outlook and their perspective that I, I feel like that for me is going to be the most exciting part of this show in all honesty. For sure. Yeah. And I think we'll, we'll get them and we'll, we'll start, we'll start talking more and, and that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. So let's, uh, let's wrap it up for another week here. And uh, hopefully the next time we chat, we'll be chatting with another person and, and having some good conversation and going from there. Um, I did want to say that we're amateurs at this. And uh, at the end of the first episode, I, I told you that uh, the music at the beginning and, and we're going to end each one with Enigmatic Heart, which we're going to keep doing. But I didn't even name the song. Mm. Uh, so the name of the song that we, we threw out at the end of the last episode was Search and Destroy. Um, again, we thank Enigmatic Heart for allowing us to use some music to, to play at the beginning of the end of each episode. That's Enigmatic Heart NY on Facebook. You can search Enigmatic Heart on YouTube and SoundCloud to listen to any more of them. Um, but as we wrap it up on another week, this one's called We Are Vikings. And uh, we thank you again for listening. appreciate you you're checking us out, giving us a shot. And um, thanks, and we'll, we'll talk to you again soon, Adam. I'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, uh, good man. Yeah, check out our check out our uh, socials. We got two dudes thirty at Instagram. Oh, see, see, I'm doing it again. I'm already forgetting. I, look, luckily, we got a partner in crime here. <laughs> it's all good. I got I got your back. And uh, appreciate that. Yeah, our Facebook as well. We we're primarily on on Instagram, but reach out yeah. to us. At two dudes thirty on all those socials. Two dudes thirty at gmail dot com as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, any questions, any comments, we'd appreciate it. Absolutely. If so. you feel like you have an awesome story that you want to share, you know, reach out to us, two dudes thirty at gmail dot com. Yes, we'd love to hear from you. So again, thank you. Anyway, Hart, we are Vikings. Check them out. Adam, I'll catch you next week. Talk right. to you soon, man. Sounds good.
Yeah, 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 yeah.